What is up, nerds? It is Reptil DIY here again. And today, I'm gonna be showing y'all how to make band buttons out of things that you have lying around right now. So let's get this shit started. All right, guys, so first and foremost, I have to state that I did not invent this method of making buttons. I did, however, use this method back in 2006 and 2007, and as you can see, I have an old, a stiff little fingers button that I made using this method, and as you can see, it is still barely hanging on to life in 2023. But anyway, this is a really simple, easy, cheap way to make buttons, pins, whatever you want to call them, out of bottle caps, soda tabs, and a little bit of DIY. So let's talk about supply. So first and foremost, you are going to need some bottle caps. No, they are not just used for post-apocalyptic currency. You can make band buttons out of them. You're also going to need some soda tabs, some extra small safety pins, some strong bonding glue, as well as spray paint. I recommend getting the same color that you want your button to be. You're going to need some Mod Podge. You're going to need a pair of needle nose pliers and a pair of snips, as well as a pair of scissors, some printer paper, as well as a small paintbrush. And the most important thing you're going to need is access to a computer and a printer. Now, if you don't have a printer, you can print off images at a local print shop and guys if you don't have access to a printer or a computer you can bypass that completely by hand painting your band logos onto your buttons just like I did with that stiff little fingers button in the beginning but you know it's a lot more intense and I'm just gonna show you how to do it the easy way so let's start with our first step all right guys so here's my four bottle caps nothing special just regular bottle caps but if you have a cool bottle cap that you want to save you can turn it into a button. I'm turning this into a Lost Coast button for my friend who likes Lost Coast beer. And on that same train of thought, you don't even have to make a band button. You can make a button of any image you want. I'm going to be making a button for my partner of this cute little Japanese rabbit. I'm not sure if it's one of Hello Kitty's friends or one of Hello Kitty's enemies, but hey, let me know down in the comments. So our first step is to take our snips and to take one of our bottle caps, and we are going to cut around the edge of the bottle cap. I'm going to let you guys know right now, the more snips that you make around all these edges, the rounder your button's going to be. If you want to take your time and make a nice round ass button, then cut more snips into those edges, please. But here we are, I cut all the edges out, I kind of half assed it, but hey, I work a full time job and I have to make a video, so this is what you get. Next up, we are painting the surface of our bottle caps. I'm using Rust-Oleum because it applies to everything and it is also a primer as well as a paint. Also make sure that you're using the same base color of paint that you want your button to be. For example, if you have a white button logo, you should paint your uh, bottle cap white. I know that makes sense, you guys are kind of slow, but you get it. Also do about two or three layers of that paint on your bottle caps. Next up, we are going to take our soda tabs, straighten them out, and cut off any excess bits of metal that you see. You can see me doing it right there with my snips. Pretty easy shit. Now here's the fun part we've all been waiting for. We're actually going to insert our tiny little safety pin through our soda tab, just like that. And then we're going to set it inside of our beer cap, just like that. Then you're going to take your needle nose pliers and you're going to push down those edges of all those snips that you made. Like I said, the more snips you make, the rounder your button is going to be in the end. When that is all done, you're going to take some heavy setting glue. I'm using E6000. Use whatever you think is going to work, but E6000 works great. Just fill in those crevices and make sure not to fill in the head of your safety pin, but there you go. We got all our buttons done, all four of them. You flip them over, we see our paint. Yeah, they're ugly, but they'll do the job. All right, so this is the part of the video where we actually print off the logos or images that we want to use. I just use an image search. I find a logo I like, and I go in with a photo editing app, and I uh, make it like a circle around it, and then I downsize the size of that image to be about a half an inch in diameter. You can use whatever photo editing app you have or program. It, it all works the same in the end, as long as when you print it on printer paper, it is about a half an inch or about 2.5 centimeters for you non-Walmart, non-McDonald's, uh, non-Americans out there. But yeah, just edit your circular images to fit inside your beer cap, pretty easy. So I have all my logos printed out to fit inside my beer caps. 
I have Litz, I have Chronic Hate. Check out Chronic Hate if you're into some hardcore punk. They're out of Texas. I will be posting links below in the description. And I also have that cute little Japanese Sanrio bunny. But anyway, just cut up those logos nice around the edges. And here we go, pretty easy shit. Now we're gonna take our logos and we are gonna attach them to our buttons. We're gonna use some Mod Podge. Mod Podge is pretty cool because it's waterproof. You're gonna do a layer of Mod Podge right on top of your button just like this do a layer not too thick because you don't want to be all creamy and shit but just a nice light layer will do it and you set your uh, logo on top make sure it's centered nice and centered you don't want to be crooked and then you're going to come back with another layer of mod podge and just mod podge that shit right on you can let it dry for a few hours and you can do another layer of Mod Podge. Hell, you can do three layers of Mod Podge if you really want to Mod Podge everything up. But definitely allow a couple of hours in between each layer of Mod Podge so it dries properly. So here we are, we have our finished buttons. As you can see, why I said that you want to use a base layer of paint as the same color that your logo is going to be. Because it looks kind of funky having a black base with a white logo, but it is what it is. You get what you get. These are fun buttons to make. They're easy to make and they're cheap to make. And I'm sure you have everything sitting right there next to you. Maybe you're not a printer, but hey, we make shit work when it's all DIY. Like I said, this is an easy method of making band buttons or buttons of anything that you want. All DIY for cheap. Now, if you guys need to make multiple buttons of the same image, I would highly suggest that you just buy a button press online. They go for about 70 bucks and you can make unlimited buttons. And these legit button presses are well worth their investment if you're a band starting off. The method that I showed you guys today works great if this is your first band and you have to get like a handful of buttons out. Or maybe you just want to make some buttons of a band that doesn't make buttons anymore. Or maybe you just want a button of whatever you want. You know, it's, it's really easy, really simple. It's not meant to be some mass produced buttons, you know, but they will last a long time and they're legit. Weirdos have been using this DIY beer cap button method for decades. So if you like what I showed you today, definitely hit that button down below and check out my other DIY tutorials. Until next time, see you later, nerds.